So we're going to continue with Hilchot Tzitzit, and uh, we're in Siman Yud Aleph in Shulchan Aruch. We're actually on the second side of the page, come to think of it, because we left off uh, last time in, uh, in Halacha Yud, I think Halacha Yud actually is where we left off um, last time. So the, the last thing that we talked about was, how do you define what is considered the corner of a garment with respect to tzitzit. So what that means is that it can't be too far from the edge of the garment and it can't be too close to the edge of the garment. So the measurement of too far, well, the, the measurement that the ideal measurement is within three thumb widths of the edge of the garment. So if you do this, like one, two, three, it's right there. It's right in the middle of the third thumb. Okay. Now, how far, sh- how close should it not be? Is this amount from this part of the thumb to here? So about here. This would be anything within this would be too close to the edge. So you want it to be inside the garment so that it's hanging and resting on the garment. Ala kanaf. That's what it says because it's ala kanaf. So it should be resting on the corner of the garment, which means part of it should be resting on the corner of the garment. So that's why you put it into it. But if it were too far in, you'd say, well, that's not the corner anymore. That's the middle of the garment. So in order to find a balance, basically that's what we say. The ideal place is for it to be within three thumb widths of the corner, from both from this edge and from this edge. We use the same measurement from both sides of the corner. In other words, from, if you look at it, it's a, it's a right angle. So from both of the lines in the right angle, um, we, we do this measurement. That's why it's about equidistant from the two edges of the tabit. So you're saying the maximum is, is three thumbs? And three the minimum is one. widths of a thumb. And the minimum is this, like the height of the top part of your thumb, pretty much, is the minimum. So that's how we measure it. So that's what, and, it, and then they said, That's what the Ramah says. You, should, you, you measure this in a straight way. We don't go diagonally, but we go straight from here and from here, from the two edges. We don't go from the diagonal. Now he says, now we're in Saif Yud. So he says, So what happens? You originally placed the tzitziot in the proper place. But what happened was that the, the garment wears down uh, to the point that, there, that there's no longer a space. So the halacha is that kasher, it's still acceptable. Since when you put it in, it was at the right spot, we're not concerned if it wears down. Now, nowadays we reinforce the edges with all kinds of things, so it prevents it, that from happening. But in theory, that could happen. What well, happens in kids' tzitzit? That's like, true. They go wild and play in the sandbox and it gets yeah. a little. Yeah, well, the talit katan, it's easier to get ruined than the talit gadol. Usually they reinforce them pretty well. Um, and that's why he says, uh, that nowadays they put some kind of a, you know, some kind of a, a border around, around the hole also. Um, so usually there is a, some kind of reinforcement around the edge, as you could see, and some reinforcement around the hole that the tzitzit goes in, so that way it won't break from either side. Because the two places that it could theoretically become if diminished is if this hole gets bigger, if the hole that the tzitzit are in gets bigger because it wears down, it could get closer to the edge. If the edge wears away, the edge could come, so to speak, closer to the hole. So uh, in the end, it's the same same result. So in order to prevent that, we put reinforcements into the garment. So now he says, "Yesh omrim she betoch rochav abeged in lo shiur, ve'esh omrim she din rochav abeged kedin the orech v'ner in divrahim." And that's actually where we end the last time. Come to think of it, that basically what he says is that this spacing is both from the width of the garment and from the length of the garment, meaning that we measure it from both edges so that it is the right amount from here and the right amount from here. So from both perspectives, it is uh, spaced out properly. Now, he says, So what is he talking about here? The, what basically what you would have is sometimes like this. This is a good example actually because this talit sort of has like extra stuff hanging off the edge. So an extra border on the edge or extra pieces of string. In this case they tie it to look decorative but extra pieces of hair sticking off the edge of the garments. 
Okay, so we don't hang the tzitziot from here, from the border. It's not considered really part of the main garment. It's something that's just hanging off. It's extra strings hanging off or a border hanging off. It's not considered the main garment, so we don't hang it there. However, if you want to measure, let's say there is a border or there are these extra protrusions on the end. We want to measure how far in we place the tzitzit. We have to include that in the measurements. Okay, so he says, with, so even though it's not considered part of the garment, that you can't hang the tzitzit in there. But we do consider it part of the distance that we have to take into account when we think how far in to place the tzitzit. Okay, that's why he says, So if we needed, to, we could count the border as well, or the piece sticking off towards the, the minimum amount that there has to be between the edge of the garment and the hole that the tzitzit goes in. Okay, and if we're measuring maximum also, we should take it into account. Okay, so in terms of maximum, if there's some strings hanging off the end that are like a border, we should take that, we should count our three thumb maximum from there, not from the edge here. So even though we can't hang the tzitzit in there, we still count it from our me- for our measurement purposes. That's what he's saying. So, v'tov shim dot shiur kesher gudal below a gedil, v'yetoch gimel etzvot im a gedil. So he says, basically, what, what should you do? If you're counting minimum, the Rama says, this makes sense. If you're counting minimum, you should count it without that extra border. So in other words, we treat the extra border as limbo, right? So if you're counting minimum, don't include it. Because you're being lenient to include it if you're counting minimum. Because you're saying, this is far enough from the edge of the garment because I'm also counting this. So I can put it right here, because I'm counting this border as well. So it says, don't count it for that. Make it go a little bit further in. But if you're counting maximum, and you want to know, is it too far in? So then you have to take into account the border as well, and make it closer. So we basically are ruling stringently in both directions. We say, we're, going to consi- we're not going to consider it when it comes to minimum. We're not going to be generous and considerate when it comes to minimum. When it comes to maximum, we're going to be stringent and say, you know what, let's factor it in as well. And make sure we're not too far away from the border where we place the tzitzit. So now he says, Minyan chutea tzitziot. How many strings do you need? Bechol kanaf, arba'ak fulim, shem shimona. We put four strings in each hole. In other words, four strings in each corner, which end up being eight. So if you count them down here, you get eight strings. Right? If you count them up here, there are really only four strings folded over in here. But they result in eight when they're folded. If you add any, it's no good. You can't add any. Only four. Four is the maximum. Now, of course, each one of these is made up of, is twisted from many, many threads. If you look very closely, you can see that it's shizurim, as we learned. You can see that it's twisted. However, um, they're twisted into one, so it's no problem. He says, Yachtoch rashe achutin harba'a v'yitchavem bakanaf v'yichpelem v'az yuchet. That what you do is, you cut the four strings, okay, so you take the four strings and you make sure that they're no longer attached anywhere. You make sure that they're four distinct strings and then you fold them into the hole and when you fold them into the hole now you have eight strings hanging down, right? You started with four, now you have eight. Make sure you cut the strings before you put them into the hole. In other words, don't have them uh, connected with one another in any way when you put them in. Why? Because. Because she'im karach afilu chulya echad. And he says, Perush chelek me'atzitzit sheben kesher lekesher v'kashar afilu kesher echad v'achar kach hatachan pasul mishum tasev lo mene'asui sh'ar v'pisul asam because as we learned many times you cannot tie the tzitzit and then cut them. If you tie the tzitzit when the tzitzit are still connected to one another. Okay? And then you end up uh, tying, in other words, if you tie the tzitzit first and then you cut them to disconnect That's them. That's outside source, cutting them from an outside right. source. No, let's say they were too long. Right, then you're allowed to cut them. If they're too long, you're allowed to cut them. Outside source, right. In other words, they're connected to something else. Right. Or like the case that the Rabbah had was you, hung, you took four strings and you hung them through the two corners. Right? And then you started tying them and then you cut the middle. And it falls, it falls down. So you can't do that because you, you, and even if you tied one kesher, because really the minimum, minimum amount for tzitzit to be kesher is one. So even if you tied one knot, 
of this tzitzit, and then you said, oh, two of them are connected, or it's connected to the other one, or however it is, then you have to cut it, and, and you have to cut it. So now it's no good, because you actually, the cutting that you did is what actually made the tzitzit kasher. So you might say, no, no, no problem, because I'm still not done. Right? I'm still going to continue tying knots. I'm still going to continue twisting it around. So I'm not done. So the cutting didn't really fix the tzitzit. In most of the times when we think of the case where you cut the tzitzit, it's when you're totally done, and the last action you do is cut it. That for sure you can't do. But you might say to yourself, no, I tied only one or two knots. And then I realized it was still connected. I needed to cut it. So the cutting was only in the middle of the process. Now you went back to work, no problem. He says, no, since even one knot is actually fulfilling the minimum requirement, you actually, when you cut the tzitzit, you made it kasher. Because really, even with just one knot, it was kasher. So therefore, that, that's a problem. You'd have to untie the whole thing and start over. Knots are not, they're not, the specific they're knots not are, halakha, it's just, right. there's like different positions, so the knot is not what makes it. Clear. One minimum knot is the amount that you need. Okay. So if you put even one knot in, it's like you did the mitzvah already. So if now you had to cut it, then when you tied that one knot, it was actually bapisul, as he says, it, was, it wasn't good. So now he says like this. So now he gives you instructions of how to tie the tzitzit. And if we look at one, we can kind of get an idea of what he's saying. He's talking about here. So he says, you take the four and the four and you tie them twice. Should be shte pa'amim in our Hebrew, but it's okay. Zel gavze. One on top of the other. So there's a double knot at the top. That's step one. Then he says, Now remember, you leave one of the strings longer than the others. You take the long string and you tie it around. You put it around the other seven, a few, a few windings. He doesn't say how many windings. And now you can see it here, right? Here's the double. Double knot right here. Then what do you do? And then he says, so what do you end up having? Five knots with four spaces. Is that what I have? Yeah. See that? One, two, three, four spaces. And one, two, three, four, five knots. That's the total. Including the first knot. Including the first knot. So the first knot counts. So that's five with four spaces in the middle. And she la kirichot. He says, really, there's no, halachically speaking, there's no measurement for how many windings you have to do. It's all minhagin. It's all custom. So as long as you have, he says, four gudalim. And again, a gudal is the width of a thumb. So here we have much more than that, we could see, right? We have one, two, three, four, many, you know. Here. He says, as long as you have four thumb widths, in this case, even to here is one thumb width already, to here and to here would be, this would be long enough already, you know, wouldn't matter. Okay, and, and that the strings hanging, the anaf, the hanging strings are supposed to be two thirds of the tzitzit. So this must be one third. So if this is minimum four, then that means that the long strings are minimum eight, right? Because it has to be two thirds. Now, you know, and that's true in any case. If you make this 100, not that you would, but if you made it 100, then you'd have to make this 200 to make it two-thirds. Okay, because out of the 300, 200 would be... So whatever's left have to be two-thirds. It should be two-thirds. Two-thirds okay, loose. See that right now, like, we have some here. Right. That's very short. Right. Very left. Obviously... But the Avada might be okay, but when you start out, that's how you're supposed to make it. We're going to see what happens in the next siman. He talks about devarim uh, poslim, but see what happens if they if they get torn. So you don't have to. It's not necessarily pasul. So that's that's the rule. But the way you're supposed to do it is two thirds. So like you know, really you you would fold it this way and then this way, and you could see it was done pretty well. See, so it's just about right. You know that it should be two thirds. You should be able to fold it twice over, and it's, it should be even. Um, and, and so that's so he says that's the minimum. So the minimum is four gudalim, four widths of a thumb for the tied part, eight for the loose part. But it could be more. The Rama says v'meherich bet hatzitzit yiresh shlishito yegedil ubet chalakim anaf. He says, and similarly, no matter what the measurement is that you use, one third knotted and two thirds loose. That's the rule. V'noagim, and that's from the Rambam. V'noagim lechroch ba'avir rishon zayin kerichot, uvasheni tet, uvashlishi yud alef, uvaravii yud gimel. So he says that the, the custom is, as we know, seven, we have seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. That's the typical custom. The, that you have, the first time you go around seven times, and if you count, you'll see, most talitot, that's what they follow. 
7, 9, 11, and 13. Now, you'll rem- that this is uh, the, the position, actually, of Tosafot, because the Rambam said, there's a big machloket about when the Talmud says, don't have less than 7 and don't have more than 13, okay, in the, in the wrappings. So the Rambam actually says that whenever you make what's called a chulia, this is called a chulia, you always wrap just three times. That's it. The only question is, how many of those units do you make? Okay, so when he, he understood it, that the Gemara means, the Talmud means, so, so, right, so meaning, four. but there's always just three units, three wrappings. So in other words, the Rambam says there's only one type of, of kricha, there's only one type of chulia, it's called, which is of three krichot. So you would have three, 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 and no, he says it's the number of chuliot. So he would say you either have seven, which would be 21 wrappings around, or you have 13. Or somewhere in between that. Somewhere between that. The Rambam understood. The Rambam says. 13 is. Which means 13. Is the number of or units. Or the number in of other, units. Yeah. So like this is a unit. So our so units are 7. 3 and then 13. 13 uh, Like this. Yeah. So here. How many chuliot do we actually have? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. Right. So, so the Rambam would say. Really. That's wrong. It should be. 1, 2, 3. Is 1 chulia. 1, 2, 3. Is 1 chulia. 1, 2, 3. Is 1 chulia. 1, 2, 3. Is 1. And then you have 7 of those. From 7 to 13. And that's what the Temanim. If you look at the Temanim. That's what they do. What's the one okay. you showed us you have? Th- that's, like t- that's done the Rambam way. So, yeah, so that's, that's why you have these one, two, three, and a space. One, two, three, and a space. One, two, three, and a space. That's how the Rambam has it. The, the Tosafot said, no, it doesn't mean the number of chuliot. It means how many windings in each chuliah. You see? How many windings in each chuliah. So how many chuliot do we actually end up having here is only four. But one is seven wrappings, nine, eleven, thirteen. Why? Because the Talmud says between seven and thirteen. So they're interpreting it, not that it's the number of chuliot, not the number of units, but the number of wrappings within a unit is really it, okay? So that's how Tosafot understands, and that became the common practice. And that's why he says you have 7, 9, 11, 13. So you go from the 7 to the 13. So it's 2 by 2. It has to be 2 by 2. If you want to get to the 13, that's why you got, it doesn't... He's skipping numbers, right? He's skipping numbers. Now, he could have had, he could have had more. He could have had 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Right? Because the... No, it doesn't say that. Well, I mean, minimum, yeah. So, but he's saying minimum is the, is the physical measurement, how wide it is, how long it is. He doesn't say the minimum of how many units. See, the Rambam says there's a minimum of how many units, which is 7. And we don't even have that. Okay? We are having only 4 units. He says the only thing that, that differs is the number of units, not the number within a unit. So Safot, the way the Shulchan Aruch learns, is that it has to be the number of wrappings within a unit. So you could have many units, as long as the, as long as the total uh, length of the tied part is a, is a minimum amount. You can have as few or as many as you want, in theory. Okay, but we, but the only numbers you can, the number of windings has to be 7 to 13. So we do 7, 1 of 9, 1 of 11, and 1 of 13. Okay, so we end up with 4 Julio, which the Rambam would say that's not enough. Okay, but actually the Rambam wouldn't care because Rambam himself says that when we don't have Tchelet, it doesn't matter. So for a Talit, like this wouldn't matter. And nobody does 7, 9, 11, 13 for the ones that have Tchelet anyway. Um, that's just when we don't have it. So he says, Sha'olim kulam mem. So what's the, what's the number? What's the significance of the 7, 9, 11, 13? He says, because it comes to 40. Kiminyan Hashem echad. Sha'olim lamitet, because if you count up the 7, 9, 11, and 13, what do you end up getting? You end up getting, uh, 39. And then ve'im Hashem, and then Hashem is 1. He's counted as one. So that's him. Mem. That's, that's 40. And also at the end of each string is a tie. Now you could see that this is a bad example because look, this is becoming frayed at the end. See that? It's becoming frayed. They usually, they have little they usually have a knot at the end. So these are maybe older that weren't done as well. So you can see this is becoming frayed. But, the, but if you look at a nice delete, you'll see that it's actually, the t- there's a tiny knot at the end to hold the twisted threads together. Now, if this became totally loose, you would have a real problem. But as it is now, it still looks okay. But that's why they would tie it to make sure that it didn't fray like that. Now, that's, so that's where we get this idea from, of having the, these numbers. 
Okay, the seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and plus Hashem is one, so that gives you that. That's for that adds up to the number forty. Now the seven, nine, eleven, thirteen has to do with the, rem, remembering the Shamayim. Each one of these numbers has a symbolic significance in remembering Shamayim, and the idea behind it was that since we don't have techelat anymore, we remember the Shamayim, we remember the heaven, not with the blue color, but with the numbers, or with remembering the name of Hashem that it, that equals Hashem Echad. Basically, that that Hashem Echad is thirty nine. Okay, and uh, the gematria of Hashem Echad is 39. And then Hashem himself, so to speak, adds one, so you have a total of 40. Okay, so that's, so that's why when you look at the number, if you, if you add the number up, so you, set, uh, you know, 7 plus 9 is 16. Okay, and 11 plus 13 is uh, 24. Yes, yeah, so you get 40, right. And that's Hashem Echad plus Hashem, counting for one more. So you, it's supposed to remind you of Hashem Echad. And the Gemara goes into these numbers of seven and, and, and from seven to thirteen as, as reflecting the heavens. So that's that's another reason as well. So now he says the last halacha here. If Tedvav Yesh Omrim some say should tzarich ledaktik should let sitziot leorech talit. So did you ever wonder, for example, like in a talit like this? Let's say you're making a talit. So where should the tzitziot go? Because theoretically, one could say, well. I could hang it either this way, the way it is here, or I could hang it this way. How do I know if it's this way or this way? You know, it could go either way. So the orecha talit means this way, because this is the length of the talit. The length of the talit is long. So if it's going length, it means it goes this way. If it were width, it would go this way. Okay? So he says there's some that say it has to go length. Why? Which means it has to be hanging over the corner. And this way it's hanging over the corner. This way, he says, um, that if the bottom of the talit, in other words, if it, instead of hanging this way, it were to hang this way, it's hanging down towards the ground instead of hanging along the, the garment itself. Now, of course, when you wear it, it's going to point towards the ground anyway. But if you were to have it this way, it's going directly towards the ground. If it's going, to, if it's going the length of the garment, so it's really seen more as going along with the garment, extending out from the length of the garment and crossing and going over the corner rather than just hanging directly down. So that was one position that was, uh, off, and, and that's generally the custom that that's how we do it. So he says, He says that there were some who said, you shouldn't do this. Okay, which is put another extra piece of garment on the corner of the talit in order to reinforce it. Because what's in, what ends up happening is, remember, the tzitzit is supposed to be like an extension of the garment. It's supposed to, in a certain way, blend with the garment, connect with the garment. If you have an extra piece here, so you're, you're taking that away. You're taking that away because now the tzitzit is no longer on the garment itself. It's on this piece of whatever. So he says, there's some say you can't do that, but the minhag is to do it. What's the reason the minhag was to do it? Because the argument was, what is the reason for this? It's only to reinforce the garment. That's why they put it here. They put it to reinforce the corner. Because what's the most delicate part of the garment that's going to wear out? It's the corner. So since the purpose of it is to reinforce and strengthen the corner, we don't look at it as something extraneous, that you're hanging the tzitzit on an extraneous piece of of, uh, uh, cloth. We see it as this extra piece is actually reinforcing and strengthening the talit itself. But we also learned that if it was leather, that corner would still be... That's right. Sure, so it's the same idea. Right, except in that case, in the case of leather, that's actually how the garment was made. In this case, it's just a super added entity. You have to sew it. You can't sew, That's true. You can't add a leather. You can't, like, make it with the regular fabric. It has to be sewn like that. Either. That's true. That is true. You would have to attach it differently. Yeah, so, it's, so it would follow from that, that, and we know that when the majority of the garment is cloth and the talit is... Uh, and the corners are made of leather that you go by the majority of the garment. Yeah. That is true. But what they're saying here is to, to add something extra just on the corner. Something extra. Right, something extra. Um, and uh, is, is, not, is something you shouldn't do because then the tzitzit are not on the garment anymore. But the leather is also something extra. That is true. It's a good point. It's a good point. I mean, I think that the difference might be that in, in the case of the leather, the leather is not something that has a mitzvah of tzitzit altogether. So maybe you could argue that that it's that it's you know nullified by the gar- main yeah. by the primary garment. Whereas here you're using something that maybe by itself could be another garment, and you're super adding it. But you're right. But I would say logically, yeah. You you know I was thinking the same that you know the halacha seems to really follow anyway 
from the case of the leather, but I think that they would say there that in the case of the leather, we don't look at the leather at all because it's not even under the hilchot tzitzit at all. Because you don't put leather, a leather garment, pure leather garment, you wouldn't put tzitzit at all. I suppose that's reason. So now we move on to Siman Yud Bet, and it's, this is a very practical Siman, probably the most practical um, in all of Yilchot Tzitzit. And I just realized, oh, we don't have the whole thing here. I don't, I don't think I've copied the rest of it. Did I? I think I thought that this was the beginning of the Siman. Okay, that's all right, so I'll read it out of it. I can read it. Okay. So the, uh, move to the next Siman, though, with the beginning of it you have. So, which is Im Nifsiku. So this is the most practical case, right? What happens if the tzitzit get broken, they get torn? It happens to everybody at some point, you know, that at least some of the strings get torn. So what, what's the, what is the halacha in this case? So he says that, Im Nifsiku Kol So you have a case where all of the strings tore. All of them. Something happened. They, they all got chopped. What we're talking about right here. Okay, in the loose strings, they got chopped. So, If you could take all of these torn strings and make a, a, a knot, a slip knot, you know, a little, a little loop knot out of all of them, there's enough, then it's still kashe. If it doesn't have enough of kede aniva, that it could be tied together into a knot, all of them together, which is a little bit more, we're going to see that if just one of them I is torn. You, like you would tie a shoelace? Yeah, because you would need a little more that's space, that's a little more. Mm-hmm. You need a little more. In other words, what they're going to say later is that if you wanted to just tie one string around itself, it's a little bit less of a measurement than if you wanted to tie other ones with each other. Why don't we have your... Oh, you have to tie all of them. It's probably kosher bedevad. Yeah, that's it's it. not ideal. But, but yeah. I'm saying so you, you'd, uh, you'd have to be able to tie all of them together into one. Like, right, if they're all cut, as long as they're all able to be tied together. I see, so you There's enough to tie all of them, them. right. If, if we're evaluating just one, we just look at whether you can make a loop out of that one. Then it would be enough. Now, so he says, um, so in that case, so, so now I'm moving on to where you guys don't have. So he says, that afilu b'chut echad shenefsak kulo pasu. However, if there is even one string that's completely severed, it's possible. So that means that, you know, as long as these, all, even if all the strings are cut, but there's still enough that you could tie something out of them, it's okay. If even one of them is completely gone, it's no good. So how come I've always heard that if only one... You're going to find out. You still be- ah, so you tell me what's the reason. Because I heard, like, the other edge is still... Because look... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's still there. The there are eight. Yeah. So really, if let's say this one is, is torn completely off, you know the other half of it is in here. Yeah, yeah so I'm saying... The other half of it is in here. Yeah. So okay. none of the four... In other words, you have to have four chutim. Yeah. So none of the four is totally gone because in here somewhere is the other side of this one. So even if I tore this one off, I still have the other ones. Okay? That's why. But we're going to see. That gets qualified. So he says, he'll cut. This is exactly what the Shulchan Aruch says, since they're all cut, folded. So therefore, if two of them are completely obliterated, meaning you can't even fold them over, because it might be the same one. Shema nifsak chutechad, because you can't tell. Maybe that's from the same one. You don't know. How can you tell? You look at this, can you tell me which one is the partner of the other one? You can't tell. However, he mentions many Svaradim have the custom when they tie titi to do something very special, which is they tie um, a, sl- a slip knot of a certain sort at the beginning that keeps the titi always on the same side. Meaning that that when they hang down, um, you know for sure that the four on this side, the four on one side, and the four on the other side are not the same. The, the way that the Svaradim do it is that in their talitot, this is not uh, Sephardically done, but in their talitot, the four on one side and the four on the other that you see are definitely separate. Okay? They're definitely separate because four ends and four ends. Now, we, don't, we still don't know which one goes with which one, but we know that the ones on this end, on this half, these four, are definitely four distinct ones, and these are definitely four distinct ones. So, so that means if you had two on this side, or even all four of them gone on this side, you would still know that these four, are, they're all still here. You see? That's what he says. So he says, so he says, 
בעניין של עולם ארבעה ראשים הם מצד אחד של הקשר וארבעה ראשים מצד האחר. So they have a special way of doing it so that they're always on opposite sides. So therefore, אם נפסקו שני ראשים מצד אחד, כשר. דוודאי, אין, כי זה דוודאי שני חוטים הם. You know that there are two different חוטים. If two of the strings on the same side are torn, you know they're not from the same string. Because there's everything... You're able to see that for sure they're not from the same string. Right. So he says, והרי נשתייר מכל אחד הראש שני, שהוא יותר מכדי עניבה. As long as what's on the other side is still good, it's still כדי עניבה, which means it could be folded over into a loop, then you're good. And they say that's about four centimeters. So he says, ולרבנו תם, ולרבנו תם, According to Rabbeinu Tam, he's more stringent. Rabbeinu Tam has a more stringent position. He says that lo machshirim ella benishteru shenei chutin shelemim. So this is where you get to a problem. This is why it's b'diavad. So he says the only time we allow you to use a talit that has even one string broken, or even two, is if you have at least two complete strings. Two complete strings, for sure. Which means. You would need to have, you need to certainly have them. So he says, therefore, da'inu arba rashim, shekol echad me'a rashim, aroch yud bet gudalim. Because remember, the minimum amount is 12 thumb widths, is the minimum amount of tzitzit. So you have to have, in other words, at least two strings that are, a, that are completely you know, intact. Four, in a, four ends that are completely intact. So that would mean, um, since in order for two strings to be totally intact, that means both halves of them. So that means out of the eight that are hanging down, at least four of them have to be totally intact for it to be good, according to Rabbeinu Tam. Totally intact. But for That's the, unlike what the Shulchan Aruch sure that there Right. Separate. So the Shulchan Aruch himself says that even if they're all cut and they meet the minimum amount of the four centimeters each, then you're still good. But according to Rabbeinu Tam, unless you have at least four of these that you know that they're two ends of two strings, you're not going to be good. You have to have at least two strings completely intact. As machshirim kishinifsuko ashne chutin achirim. Im nishtayer bahem kede aniva. Aval im nifsuko shilosha chutin. If you have a case where three are broken, right? So now you know that at least uh, three of the strings are affected. Okay? You don't have at least two that are totally intact. So what do you do now? So pesulim, there's nothing you can do. Afal pishe nishtayer b'hem kedai aniva pesulim. So he says, Umepnei kach keshe nechtechu shlosha rashim, im lo dikdek v'et asiyat ha-tzitzit shiyu nikarim im arba'a rashim shemitzad echad shel ha-kesher, chayshinan shem ha-kol rosh hu michut echad, v'nimtza she'en kan elochut echad shalem. So the problem is, if you don't know, in other words, if we know, let's say, that everything on this side is, and everything on this side is distinct. There are four ends here and four ends here. Okay? This is, so we're not gonna, we know that if, let's say, two are cut on this side, okay, that you definitely have at least two that are still intact. Okay, you must, if only two are cut on this side. We know that. Now, if three are cut on this side, let's say, if three are cut on this side, so what would you say now? Um, so definitely none of them are totally intact because at least three, you know that this is three out of the four that are now all cut. Okay? So if you had two, though, you'd still be okay according to Rabbanatam, according to this. But if you didn't, okay, if you didn't, then if any of them, okay, if any three of these are cut, now you have to be worried that maybe there's nothing that's in, that you don't have two whole ones anymore. Because let's say this one was cut, this one was cut, and this one was cut. It could be three different strings all cut now. You don't know. Or it could be, it could be from the same It could be that there are two from the same string and one, one other. Or it could be that all three are three different strings and all you have left, the only fully intact one you have is one. Okay, since you don't know, there's nothing you can do. According to Rabbeinu Tam. If you know the, the way that we said before, so then even if you had, let's say, two on this side, you know that, they're, that they're, they're still two intact on the other side, right? You're gonna know. So that's why he says, according to us, so, so he says, since you don't know, you have to always work. In other words, if, so if, for example, you, you were to cut two here, okay? 
And then you were to go to the other side and you were to cut one of them. Okay, so what would be then? So you know that these four are separate. So let, let's say, so according to the ones that don't separate on the two sides, so we don't know. So any three that are cut, we have to be worried. We have to be worried that now that, that two of the strings are knocked out. And they're not, I'm sorry, that three of the strings are knocked out and they're not three intact. Okay? But if you had, let's say, four on this side and four on this side, and you knew that they weren't the same. Okay? And then let's say you had one cut over here and two cut over here. So what would you say then? So what would be the outcome of it in that case? You have two cut over here. Okay? Now it could still be that you have two intact. Why? Because this one that's cut over here could be one of these. Yeah, but then that's really right? bad. That means you're missing a whole one. A whole one is okay as long as you have at least two intact. Oh, it has to be at least two. Right. Better. So it's still it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better because although it's still a, it's still a question because I mean you know that these are different strings, but still let's say maybe this is one, right? And maybe the and if there were two on this side. You still don't know for sure. Maybe you knocked out. And then you don't have four. I don't understand because then you don't have four anymore if both ends of one are cut off. That's right. You don't have a four anymore. Right, you don't know. Well, if you don't know, then, well, that's bad. <laughs> right, if you have one on each side, you mean cut off. Then you, well, no, because you still have the other half of it hanging down. Yeah, but if you don't Oh, have you're saying if you half, don't have the other half, because you don't know which one is which. Yeah, so how come if I you, don't know which one is which. Who knows how they rolled it all up? You oh, that's that's a good point. So how do you know? That's, that's actually a good point. I, didn't, I hadn't thought of that. I have to think about that. So because, because here, could you yeah. see that you know for sure? No, you're right. It's all rolled up together. Right, because if you have, uh, if this is completely gone on this side, and this is completely gone on this side, right? So how do I know that this is not from the same one? That's what my... Right, and then you really only have three strings. Yeah. Right, that's a good point. In other words, as long as you're on the same side, you're still good. Yeah. That's, that, I think that's what the Shulchan Aruch is saying. In other words, as long as you're on the you same side. Know, you could right. As long as you're on the same side, you're still good. Yeah. Right? But if you go over to, if you have one on one side and one on the other side, now you're definitely in trouble. If you could distinguish the sides. If you can't distinguish the sides, then any re complete obliteration of two, you have to but be worried. This one you can't. Right, this one you can't. So uh, if, the, if you have one missing on either side completely, and you know the sides, then you're in trouble. It's only if you're missing two on the same side that you're still not in trouble. When you know the sides. When you don't know the sides, even two missing is going to be a problem. Okay, now according to, in, according to Rabbeinu Tam, what Rabbeinu Tam is saying is that it's more than that. Because even if you have two strings that are not, you have to have at least two that are completely intact. So at least two that are completely intact is a different story. Because that means we have to be worried that even if, let's say, half of all of them was cut off, okay, it would be no good. According to the first opinion, if half, like if the four on one side were all cut off, but you know you have the other half of them, you'd still be okay. Because you know you have all four still there. But Rabbi Nathan would say, no, you have to have at least two complete ones on both sides complete. Doesn't the other opinion say you have to have like mo uh, at least four, I mean, no, that you have... You could have them all cut, and as long as they're loopable at the end, they're still good according to the other side. Some. Rabbeinu Tam says you need for two requirements. You have to have that there are two completely intact strings. Both sides are completely intact. And then if the third or fourth string is only Kedei Aniva, we can let it pass. But if you don't know for sure that you have at least two full strings, which means both sides of them, right, then you're in trouble. So that means if you have three strings cut, now you have to already be worried. Because if have three strings cut, that means that two of them could have been from the same string, and the third one is from the, uh, the second string. So that means you already have two out of the four. I'm sorry, that, no, no. Yeah, you, you might have three different strings, half of them cut. So if three different strings, half of them are cut, that means that there are not two fully intact strings, according to Rabbeinu Tam. That's the problem. Yeah, so you're saying, according to the other opinion, if you know definitely one side is one side and one is the other for all the strings, then if two are cut, then it's fine. Right, even if two are going to be cut on the same three, side, even three would be good because you know the other side is good. Definitely. If it's but side. not according to Rabbeinu Tam. Because according to Rabbeinu Tam, once there's a possibility that there are not two fully intact on both sides, 
Now you're in trouble. So that would mean that if you had three missing, okay, three strings cut, even if they're on the same side, okay, certainly if they're, if they're on the same side, um, you know, where you have them divided, certainly if they're on the same side, you're going to have to worry. Even if they're on opposite sides, you're going to have to worry. Because let's say you had two on one side, okay, and one on the other side. So maybe the first two are one, two, and the other side is number three. So how do you know that it's not? So anytime you're going to have three, you're going to have a problem. Okay? Um, so he says, uh, so then you're going to have a problem. So then he says, umiyu. So he says, v'halacha kisvara rishona. That we follow the first opinion. He says, because so, you're going to have to be worried. And, uh, however, umiyu hechad efshar tov lachush v'zvara rabbeinu tam. However, wherever you can, we follow rabbeinu tam. So that would mean that we try to find a talit that has as many intact strings as possible. Okay, if we can have a talit where we know that a minimum of four of the strings are, in other words, two of the full strings are intact and just one of them is a little bit cut, that's, that's okay. Once you have three of them cut, we shouldn't really use it if we can avoid it because even if it's cut just partially, in other words, we're, not, we're saying that it's, it's not the full length anymore. Even if some of it is still there, but it's not the full length anymore, then you can't rely on any leniency once two of the strings are, are not fully intact. That's what the Rebbein Tom says. Now, so then he says, Okay, so now, now the, the Ramah says, V'noagin ke Rabbein Tam, the Ashkenazic custom is Rabbein Tam, V'kol shikenim diktek shiuni karim arba rashim, shabitzad echad, V'nifsegu shlosha rashim, mitzad echad. He says, certainly, if you, ha- if you know that uh, the right side and the left side are distinct, then if three on one side are broken, you know, de pasul. It's definitely pasul, according to Rabbein Tam. In other words, if you don't know, then it's a safek. And that's the one case where it's actually better not to know, according to him. According to Rabbeinu Tam. Right, but it's a safek. In other words, according to Rabbeinu Tam, if three strings are broken on the talit and you didn't divide it, that you know that which half, that the two halves are divided. Okay? So the three could be from any three random strings, or two could be from one string, and one could be from another string. So it could be good, or it could not, it could not be good. In other words, three could be ruined, or only two could be ruined. So, since that's the case, Rabbeinu Tam would say it's a safek. The Rama says it's even worse the Sephardic way in this case. Because if you had three on one side that are torn, then you know for sure that three of them are not complete. And Rabbeinu Tam would say it's no good. Okay, so it doesn't help you. He says, Das v'adai nefsku shlosha chutin. V'em nefsku b'shnei tzadadim nami pasul. Shem shlosha chutin meh. So, when, so, in the case of, according to Rabbeinu Tam, you have a, a, a bigger problem, which is, you don't know since he requires two of them to be absolutely complete. So if you know that the four on your left are the four halves of the four on your right, okay, so that when you cut one on the left side and one on the right side, uh, I'm sorry, if you cut two on the left side, you can never be cutting the same string. Mm-hmm. So if you cut, let's say, two on one side, you, it's already no good, according, it's already, um, and so you, already have, you have to assume two strings have been cut. And then one more on that side would be no good. One more on the other side would also be no good. Because you have to worry that maybe it's the third string. Okay, so, you, so it doesn't help you the, the Sephardic way according to Rabbeinu Tam. It makes it even more difficult. Because at least when you don't know when three are cut, you could say it's a doubt. We don't know if it came from three different strings or not. When you have, when three are cut on the same side in the Sephardic style, so now you know for sure three have been cut. Okay, so it's, it's a, it's a uh, liability in this way. So he says, So we said that the measurement for the broken tzitzit to still be kasher is if you can fold it into a loop. He says, what if, the, what if the strings are very thick? So folding it into a loop is not possible. He says, We only look at the length. Even if they're so thick that you wouldn't actually be able to bend them over into a loop, we still say that if they're long enough that if they were thin, they would be bendable into a loop, then it's good. And the Ramah says, Umisha'arin bachutin benonim. And we assume, we go by, what would you be able to do if this were an average size string? If you have super thick ones, we don't care that they're super thick. The last halakha, your kedei aniva, we've been talking all along that kedei aniva is what has to be left. Right? The amount that you can make a loop. According to Rashi, minha'anaf. That means of the hanging strings, which is what we've been saying so far. 
Lari, according to Rabbeinu Yitzchak from Tosafot, Afilu Nechtach Kol Anaf, even if all of this is cut, Velo Nishar Kedei Aniva Ela Mina Gedil, and all you have left is this amount, and it could be looped around. All you have is the tied part. He says Kashen. So he says, Uminhag Olam Karashi, Vechad Ela Efshar Yish Lismo Chalari. So he says that really the custom is according to Rashi that you should have minimum hanging tzitzit. The loose strings should be up to the minimum. However, in an emergency situation where you have no alternative and the only talit you have is cut to here and all you have is the tied part, but the tied part is long enough that it could be wrapped around and made into a loop, you could wear it. That's according to the re in an emergency, but we don't follow that in, in practice since we have talitot available. If the strings are broken, we can follow the shulchan aruch and say that as long as there's four centimeters in each one of the strings, even if they're all cut, it's going to be good because you could make a loop out of them. And that is the accepted halakha that we follow. Now we try to be stringent according to Rabbeinu Tam and get a talit that, ha- that we can be confident has at least two of the strings completely intact, which means no three strings are ruined. Because once three strings are ruined, we have to suspect that they could be from three different uh, chutim and therefore that there are not two fully intact uh, chutim anymore. So we, tr- we strive for that situation. But if we don't have that, we follow the Shulchan Aruch's basic halacha, which is that as long as the, there is Kedei Aniva, there, is four, there are four centimeters left in all the strings, we're still good. And that would mean also that, like we said before, if there are, um, in the Sephardic Talitot, where they have them separated, even if you had all four cut on this side, it would still be good according to the basic halacha, because we don't follow Rabbeinu Tam me'ikar hadin. It's not, the, it's not the basic halacha to follow Rabbeinu Tam. And since we know that each of the four strings is still represented on this side because of the way it's made, it wouldn't be a problem. In the Ashkenazic Talitot, even with the Abad, once you have two strings cut, you have to be worried that an entire string is now missing completely, and you wouldn't be able to use it at all. And uh, a court, and uh, you know th- th- that would be so a huge problem. Is that a problem also with the Rambam uh, talitot? You can't see, like you roll it around, you can't see that which. You don't know which one is which. Yeah. Right. So if you don't know which one is which, if you don't know which one is which, and then remember that according to the Shulchan Aruch is only significant when the string is completely, completely gone. But if you had a cut you, string where it's kedei aniva that you could make a loop, the four centimeters is left. That's still considered to be there. Okay, so even if it's cut, but it's still here, we don't even look at that as cut. We're talking about if it's totally torn out and missing. Okay, then if there are two totally missing, let's say from a talit where you can't tell if they might be from the same string, now you can't use it. If you can tell, you can tell. Like in the Sephardic talit where you can tell. Now, in the, uh, however, according to Rabbeinu Tam, according to Rabbeinu Tam, you can only rely on that four centimeter leniency to salvage tzitzit if there are at least two completely intact chutim, meaning both ends are completely intact. And that's why if there are three missing or even cut, three even cut, not missing, but cut, then you would no longer be able to rely on that, use that talit at all. Cut, cut means not cut because you want it to be shorter, but cut lower than the amount of the 12 thumb breadths that you're supposed to measure it by. Okay, if it's less than that, it's not perfect anymore, so to speak. And therefore, if there are not at least two perfect chutim, Rabbi Nutan won't let you use it at all. Forget about it. But we only do that l'chatchila. With the avad, we don't have to worry about that stringency. And so the talitot that we have, for sure, they're definitely kedei aniva. They're definitely going to be acceptable according to Shulchan Aruch, the ones that have the very short tzitziot. They're not mehudarim, you know, they're not ideal, but they would be, you know, with the avad, certainly good uh, for you. Have a great night. Thanks for